deep in the furnace of a dying star. Eons of fusion have created iron, and as the nuclear furnace is cooled, a sudden and violent explosion spread the iron across the cosmos. Over the next few billion years, these heavier elements accreted into this place that we call the Earth. Time passes, and humans discover this iron deep in the Earth, and discover its mystical properties. They discover ways of forging this iron, and create one of mankind's greatest inventions, the truck stop knife. This is where the story of iron ends, and my story begins. This is JJ Jinx Truck Stop Knives! Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, look at the veins on that. Oh, oh don't mind me. <laughs> Just looking through the, the new Bug K catalog. Family friendly. <laughs> start getting excited. I have a really nice unboxing video for you today. So I was looking over my past knife collection and I kind of came to a realization about knives like these. The Dragon's Fury. And uh, what do they call this one? Uh, the Double Turbo. And I realized how much I actually really like these knives. Now, they're not going to win any awards anytime soon. They're certainly not made out of the best quality parts, but I enjoy the hell out of them. Like, take the double turbo, for example. One thing I didn't mention before was just how smooth the pivot on this thing is. Watch this. Eh? Eh. Failed down that one. Sorry, I just couldn't... I was trying to do it fast. You know what? Fuck this knife. My point is <laughs> that um, this knife... It's oddly terrifying, because the, the blades are reminiscent of, like, an insect stinger. So there, there's some kind of a, just a primal uneasiness that comes with looking at this knife. Now with the Dragon's Fury, which, for those of you who haven't seen it before, is this circular monster. Uh, funnily, funny enough, with a pocket clip. Um, something not, not something you should use to prepare food with, which I've done. You can see some of the food residue on there. But um, the things that these share in common is, for one thing, they're multi-bladed. Um, but the way they achieve that multi-bladedness is through a form of symmetry. So this knife, for instance, you can imagine a mirror plane kind of sliced down the middle, reflecting on either side. It achieves this mirror type symmetry, whereas with the Dragon's Fury, it's um, more of a, a radial symmetry. So that got me thinking what are some of the other ways that multi bladed knives can be achieved? And so I went on a journey, a quest, through this barren no man's land called the internet, and I found my answer. And I bought them all. <laughs> so, my criteria were that it had to have multiple blades, this knives I was kind of looking for, um, but there had to be a symmetry element to them. Otherwise, you could just pick up any old like Swiss Army knife and say, hey, there's like 79 blades in here, game over. But um, it's the symmetry that these knives have. I want to see how far can the envelope be pushed. This is sort of a mirror symmetry, like I said, the radial symmetry. Uh, how far can we go with that to get the most number of blades possible? Let's get started. So, I got this box. Ugh, it ain't Bud K. This is Smoky Mountain Knife Works, um, which had a lot of what I was looking for. And <clears throat> to open the box, I must choose the knife. So I'm going to grab my Tristan Barnett custom knife that he made for me. Um, 
I linked to, the, to those videos woo, in and out in the past. And he wanted me to mention, oh, by the way, the leather sheath was made uh, from a repurposed briefcase. So fancy that. Or maybe it was a piece of luggage. And I got another one. See, Tristan and I have been sending stuff to each other back and forth. And I got this knife to open. So I'm going to use my first TB knife to open my other TB knife. And I will use this TB knife to open the box. Knifeception, if you will. I have not seen this before, so... Ah, good. I got a letter. And I got this knife. I'm going to look at the letter first, as is the custom. Let's see if the TB knife can double as a letter, letter opener. Letter, letter opener. Success. Okay, Tristan Barnett says, <coughs> Dear, and then he puts my full name, I will omit that. Hope you like the knife. I made it from a piece of deer antler. Interesting. Uh, and an old circular saw blade. Okay, I've seen people do that before. Actually, there's a really good video on um, YouTube where... There's a guy who says, like, shows you how you can go to Harbor Freight and for, like, less than $100 get everything you need to make your own knife. And he actually uses a saw blade as the source material. So it sounds like this might be similar. Uh, the blade is made from a saw blade, and the handle is made from a piece of deer antler. Love the mystery bikes box. This knife I made is to show my thanks to you. Hey, I sent him a Bud K mystery Bowie knife set. And... I made the sheath out of leather, recycled from a briefcase. More of that. Hope you enjoy the knife. Your friend Tristan. Thank you very much, Tristan. Um, I've been enjoying the hell out of the first knife you sent me. And I have no doubts that this other knife will do that for me in kind. All right. Well, this is just taped on here, so. Oh, that's a tough tape. Deer antler, huh? I wonder if it was, was it like a deer that you caught or found dead <laughs> or what? I know your neighbors like to shoot a lot of guns. Did, did they get astray? All right, here's what I got out of the box or out of the, the package. Um, it's your basic uh, repurposed leather sheath here. And I can already see it on the metal. It's got a TB stamped onto it. The big reveal. Ooh, whoa, man, this is not what I was expecting. It's pretty cool. <laughs> well, there's the antler, and there's a knife in it. <laughs> and so this is uh, what I presume to be the pivot. Let's see. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. And there it is. There's my deer antler knife. Now, he told me that this is more of a fillet-style knife. Um... But I'm going to use it to open cardboard boxes right now instead. <clears throat> Let me put away my original TB knife. Tristan, I love this thing. I, I can definitely tell, like, not only is it very unique, I can see the tool marks and I appreciate that. That's just pretty cool. I can see how you did it, too. You sort of cut a slit down the middle there. See, you can kind of see through it. So you had to sort of cut it the whole way down without having it break at all. And then you pinned this blade right at this point. And it, uh, yeah, it slips right in. And I like how this uh, back piece, I'm not sure what it would be called, the other part of the pivot, I guess the flipper handle, <laughs> just neatly fits right in there. That's really cool. All right. TB knife number two. I choose you to open this box. If I can, it, it's a little unwieldy because I'm like way up here and the box is way down here. So let's see if I can do it without cutting myself. Da, 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 da.
this is always the part that makes the most noise. Oh, the anticipation. Thank you, TB knife number two. All right. I bought a lot of knives. <laughs> um, not all of them are weird. Some of them are special. <laughs> and some of them are actually kind of normal. I'm just going to go in the order that I grab them. Um, and I haven't opened these up and played with them at all, so this is going to be one of those things where we sort of have to figure it out as we go along. Um, but before we do that, I just got to light one up real quick. Mm. You thought this was a cigarette, didn't you? Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> yes, I actually found... <laughs> A, well, kind of metallic looking cigarette, which um, I just had in my mouth. Probably have lead poisoning now. And the, I guess, the business end of the hidden blade lies with the filter. That's actually kind of a neat shape. So, this was actually really inexpensive. It was like a couple of bucks. And I saw it and I was like, yes, that is exactly the kind of shit that I'm talking about. I love this stuff. Um, <laughs> and I love how it's got this like O-ring so that it doesn't get rusty, I guess. Uh, stainless China. Uh, I, I can't even re see that symbol right there. You'll probably be able to see it better than I can. So, it's my first knife. The, the smoke knife. <laughs> oh, that's great. Digging right back in. <clears throat> All right. Oh, my God. There is a certain order I want to do some of these in, so I'm going to push some of them off to the side. Here's what I'm going to do. Each knife I've opened, I'm going to use it to open the next one. All right. So I got a hygiene product here. Thank you, smoke knife. I know I don't have much, but I do want to keep my hair well kept. And this comb is also a very dangerous weapon. <laughs> Sensing a theme here, uh, I, I swear I didn't search like spy equipment or anything like that. Yes, this comb is a dangerous weapon. Um, this was also very inexpensive and cheap and crappy, as you can tell. Uh, M1222 China is the only markings on this thing. I don't expect this steel to be any good. Is it sharp? It's, it's really dull. But if you're in a sticky situation... Oh, man, how much would it suck if, like, you forget, and as you whip it out of your pocket, you end up, like, scalping yourself? <laughs> uh, and the box just says, like, Personal safety comb. Comb away your troubles. <laughs> uh, that's The box itself is part of the package, I swear. The cigarette just came in this plastic bag. Cigarette pen? $1.49. All right. Um, I want to see that. Oh, yeah. And since my order was over a certain amount of money, they sent me a free Kershaw Shuffle. I actually have one of these already. So I'm just going to keep it in the, in the package. And maybe I'll organize some kind of a giveaway at a later date. All right. That's another one I'm opening later. Oh, I forgot how many I ordered. I am so happy about all of these. So I got this one to help with the zombies. Um... It's called the Zombie Nick Rabble Razor. <laughs> the Zombie Nick Rabble Razor is a tactical razor with a double thick ballistic nylon sheath. The finger hole in the handle makes it easy to grip and hang on to in any apocalyptic event. But specifically, the zombie apocalypse. Be sure to check out all the other great products, uh, the great Zombie Nick products. Warning, cancer and reproductive harm. <laughs> great. Um, so this is just like 
let me just open it. It's, and I'm not going to use the comb knife because it'll take me about three years to carve through this. So. Alright, Zombie Nick. Hi, I'm Zombie Nick. Oh, sheath is actually kind of nice. It is real sturdy and doesn't feel cheap. Um, and it's got that those riveted riveted sides, which I like for that extra structural integrity, so that the seams don't start tearing from the corner. That's one of the reasons why they put these there. Uh, now for the I'm gonna cut myself. Oh my god. If zombies were here, I'd be already dead. Jesus Christ. Alright. You lose points for awful packaging. Here's the razor itself. It's got green zombie spattering, a bunch of random holes in it. I guess that's zombie bloodletting holes. And then... There's this ergonomic side, and it's got a hole, like, almost, you can almost, yeah, you put that through, you're picky through the hole, that's what I'm trying to say. And then you start stabbing zombies. And then when you're done, you can slip it into your little sheath here. That's, uh, oh, that's a tight fit. That's, you know what? That's a really tight fit. Am I doing this right? I mean, how, how many ways can you do this? I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> I'm just going to go to the next knife. Okay, here's one that comes in a box. Yeah, okay. So this is a Rough Rider Copper series. This is um, actually kind of a more normal-ish knife that I bought. So... <clears throat> When I first started collecting, I really wanted to find a type of knife or a, oh, how do I open this thing? A kind of knife that I could get into, like a trapper, and you just kind of collect a whole bunch of tra trappers, and like that could be your thing. Oh, I see, it's like a magnetic, oh, that's nice, it's magnetic. Um, but I don't like trappers, never really did, and... One of the other knife uh, configurations, as they say, I wanted to get into was a Barlow. But not very many people make those, and the ones that do charge way too much money. And so, um, anyway, this is neither here nor there, but one of the things that I like about the Barlow is the giant bolster that it has. Now, this is not a Barlow, <laughs> um, but it's reminiscent of it with the, uh, along the, no, it, the, width, the wide kind of broom handle type shape except this one kind of curves to one side they don't do that on barlows and it's got this big bold bolster on the top now this one happens to be made out of copper or maybe it's copper plated or maybe it's not even copper i don't know and the blade you can see it's sticking way out over here this is actually what's called a hawkbill blade um, and I don't own any hawkbill blades, so that's why I wanted to get one. I like big bolsters, and I, I kind of liked the copper look. And the handle's got sort of a synthetic bone. It's not real bone. This was like $13. Um, and the pins are, are copper as well, or at least copper colored. And it's a slip joint. And that's all there really is to say about that. So... Now I have a hawkbill knife in the style of a barlow. And the case is really nice. It's got this cutout. Yeah. So you can like give it away as a gift. And it's already packaged. Or just display it in this box. And I love the magnetic flap. That's a nice touch. Rough Rider is really upping their game right now. And all right. Oh, 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 I can't wait to open that one, too. Sorry about being mysterious, but there is a specific order. Okay, now here's a knife. Of course, what else could it be? 
uh, made by Old Forge, which is uh, basically the same company as Rough Rider. It's all kind of the same stuff, really. Um, in terms of quality, I mean, I don't mean it's the same people necessarily. Um, and I realized I own a couple of Barlow knives, but one of them is really trashy. It's like a few dollars, and it's made of like basically thin, like soda can tin kind of deal, uh, or at least the, the handle material is. And the other Barlow I have isn't that bad, but it is. Um, I would drag them out and show them to you, but I don't want this video to go on for t longer than it will. Uh, so I decided, you know what, let me invest a little bit more money and get kind of a nicer-ish Barlow. So this one is actually made of some kind of bone. Some kind of animal died to go into this. And you can see the, uh, the huge bolster and then that sort of broom handle shape. Uh, this one's got some other fancy stuff to it. You can see that along this back here, they call that file working, where they cut patterns into that uh, lock for the slip joint. And then they got some up here too. Let's have a look at the blade. The blade is nice and thick. And I also got the blade in a very specific style. This is called a Warncliffe blade, where it's the cutting edge is flat and it's the top that comes down, curves down to meet the blade. And these are all things that I actually never had. I didn't have a nice big Barlow. The other ones are kind of mini and shitty. Uh, it's heavy. And I actually don't, I don't think I have anything that comes in a Warncliffe blade. So that's what I wanted. Um, and I, I also like the history of Barlow knives. They were invented basically in the uh, 1700s in England, in the Sheffield region. And they were one of the first mass-produced knives that when uh, it was like at the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, interchangeable parts and all that good stuff. And so these were just really cheap and easy to make. And the reason why these bolsters are so big on the Barlow knife is because it was an easy way and a cheap way to make, it, make sure that the pivot and the, the blade itself, the opening and the closing, and you know a lot of tension goes on this part of the blade when you're cutting and stuff. Oh, it's gone. Um, it's to make sure that it doesn't fall apart. It uh, makes it sturdier. It, it bolsters it, which is why it's called a bolster. And a lot of sailors use them, and where there are 17th century sailors, you've got alcohol, drugs, prostitution, and crime, so they kind of got a bad reputation for those reasons. Uh, but they're, they were super popular because they were so cheap to make. Here's another knife. This knife is out of this world. This is my Neil deGrasse Tyson knife. Um, is it open assisted? Oh, maybe. I don't think it's open assisted. It just has an unusually, unexpectedly smooth pivot. You know, I looked at this knife and I was like, it's patterned like a nebula. <laughs> it can't be good, but it's pretty. And I'm already surprised with how smooth this opens without any assistance. I detect a small amount of blade play, and that's that back and forth. I can feel it kind of moving a little bit, but I'm actually really surprised. This is... It's not terrible. And I like how there's even patterning on the clip as well, which is a low ride style that I like. And that just flips right out. That's nice. Um, the handle material is not, well, it ain't bone, it ain't metal, but it's actually a pretty high density plastic. And uh, what was this called? Uh, the Rough Rider Galaxy. Now they have a whole bunch of different ones of these and uh, some of them have like like bolts of lightning or or like a spiral galaxy on it. Um, this is also known in the state of California to cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. Maybe I should get a new hobby. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Now, getting down to the nitty gritty. I know, I promised to talk more about knives like these. So, going back to this knife, 
just going to remind you about what I was saying about the mirror symmetry. How can we get more blades using mirror symmetry like this? And I figured, well, you've reflected the mirror in one direction. Why not continue the trend and reflect it in the other? <laughs> you can double your blades again by just basically taking the same knife and stacking it onto itself. And you get what's called the Venom Stinger. Oh, and this is a glorious beast. It is it's huge. <laughs> Look at this thing. Uh, you got a couple of scorpions there. Okay, let's check it out. Two pocket clips. They really did the symmetry on this one. All right, there's the first two. We've done it. We've just doubled our number of blades by doing the mirror this way and this way. But really, it's almost kind of cheating. It's like taking the same knife and like attaching it to itself, which coincidentally, there's a button here, and guess what? They come apart. <laughs> and that's why they have pocket clips, I think. Maybe you could do like a whole production where you go whoosh, whoosh. Um, maybe I just should have done that without saying it. I should have just opened the knife that way. Uh, so anyway, that's one of the ways you can achieve that. I love these little scorpion rounded pattern things. Um, yes, there is this push button here that releases one knife from the other. These blades are a little bit more curved, but they do have these like holes that look like watermelon seeds or something. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. They are liner locks. Their lockup isn't that bad. They're, there's very little blade play. There are thumb studs, and it's ambidextrous, both sides. So for, that's a total of eight thumb studs. Eight thumb studs. One knife. That That is fantastic. Okay. So now we know that we can reflect in one direction, and then we can reflect in the other, and we can get four blades. What if we reflect in one direction to get this? But then just rotate that mirror 90 degrees, and you can get this. <laughs> this is basically two of these, but 90 degrees apart from each other, and it's called the torch, and it's big. Good lord. Um, I'll use my zombie nick to cut this one open. Jeez. Oh, they got other ones on the back, too, that share the same pattern, but they are lesser knives. Actually, this one's got four, and this is just one. That's boring. All right. It comes with a sheath. See, I got the silica gel. Uh, a little. What is this? I don't know what that is. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs> there it is. One, two, three, and yes, four <laughs> blades. Oh my god. That's what I'm talking about. I saw this knife and I was like, I gotta fucking have that. And now I do. Um, so it's got these like silver vomit looking things going down the side. I'm pretty sure I saw a video where somebody had a knife like this, but maybe, maybe it was like this one, so not four, and he ripped it apart. And this is literally as flimsy as like tin foil almost. Now holding it, I was expecting it to be very uncomfortable, but it's actually not. There's no ergonomic 
grooving or anything to it, but it's, I guess it's just the size of it actually kind of works. And I'm just like mesmerized by this. This is great. <laughs> um, okay. So now we know we can achieve four blades through mirror symmetry, even like that. That's that's like menacing. You could just ow. <laughs> Actually, that kind of hurt. Whew. But I was looking for something of a paradigm shift. Uh, so we've done reflection, and we've done axial and off-axial reflection. But I wanted to try what if uh, something a little different. Now I have no idea how this one's going to work. Uh, this is called the Double Impact by Victor Lee. Who's that? <clears throat> it's a giant, monstrous knife with this uh, sort of saber-looking X in the middle. And on the back, you have a clip, so you can put it in your pocket with a triple X. Now, it does have four blades. One. Two. Here's the part where it gets kind of dangerous because I don't really know how to do 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 this. Three, four. Oh, it comes apart completely. <laughs> See, I was under the impression that. You could like spin it to make it make it like this, but I guess I was mistaken. These are just two double knives that come apart. <clears throat> Although, in, oh, there it goes. It just oh, yeah, <laughs> I was right. <coughs> oh, this that that is such a satisfying outcome. I was like completely disappointed, and now I'm completely vindicated. So. Now we have a combination of mirror symmetry and rotational symmetry <laughs> to get four blades. See if I can... Oh, but that's cool that they come apart too. This is my new favorite knife, by the way. Oh my god, that's great. Okay. Close, 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 close. Now... God, that's awesome. <laughs> this is all well and good, but it still hasn't beaten the Dragon's Fury, which has five blades. So then I sat down and I thought some more. And I said, well, can we take all of the lessons that we learned today, reflection, rotation, and then that center axis pivot, could we combine all of that into one monstrosity? Yes, you can. Behold, the new master, the VL6 Twister. <laughs> this is the moment we've all been waiting for. And now I think I kind of know how it operates. What are the odds of me cutting myself this time? Six times more than normal. <laughs> Here it is. It's got a hurricane thing in the middle. And we have one, two, count with me, folks, three, four, five, ding, ding, ding. Six fucking blades. This, I changed my mind. This is my new favorite knife. <laughs> um, doesn't come with a pocket clip. But this is, this is something that the Predator would be proud of us Earthlings for. The Predator would see somebody open this up and be like, God damn, you're a badass. Fuck, give that guy an 18th century gun. Do they come apart? They do. They do. Whoa. So then you do that, and the Predator says, let's get out of here. <laughs> Oh, 
that 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 is oh I don't even know what to say I am more pleased than I even thought I would be I I just am speechless okay so now that begs the next question can we do more so we have six blades and one knife all using symmetry what next we've got to go into a higher dimension I don't know how that look would look but I'm hoping that somebody's working on it for now this is the pinnacle this is where we're gonna stop um, this is a heavy beast too and I can't wait to go out and use it on something what I don't know maybe I'll prepare some food with it <laughs> I've got just one more knife I don't remember what it is, but it's made by M-Tech, which is one of those real cheap companies that make novelty knives. So I'm already kind of excited. Oh, and look, there's instructions. Could have done with that earlier. Um, there's just nothing that could top what I've seen so far. <laughs> but this comes close. So, uh, yeah, I forgot that I got a little bit more for my zombie arsenal. It is a zombie knuckle duster knife combo. And you know it's a zombie thing because it's got that zombie green. I just fucking drop everything. Jesus Christ. Oh, my Barlow's down there, too. Stand by. Ugh. Fucking technical difficulties going on here. Okay. So. It is a knuckle duster, uh, brass knuckles, if you will. Yeah, it works. Combination knife, and I think it's open assisted. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's sort of a karambit, but it's like not curved down. It's kind of oblong, and it made a weird noise when it opened. Um, and it's got this ring on it, which sort of makes you kind of think it's supposed to be, um, sorry, my screen keeps going out. It's supposed to be, what do you call it, uh, fuck, bearings, right? Yeah, but, um, I don't think it is. Listen to that sound. It sounds kind of hollow. Anyway. And then it's got this pink thing across the spine. So after you're done punching the zombies, you can flick this open. And then, uh, then what? Slice them somehow. This is a USA Design MTA863. MTech USA. Yes. Don't leave home without it. Now, if I had the choice between this thing to do with zombies and this thing you better believe I'm going with this thing um, and sadly I think that comes to the end of my video did I open everything yeah I think I did so this is JJ Jinx truck stop knives